Hi folks, uh, just here to tell you about our brand new yarn, our new fluff, Lowther Lace. Um, we have mentioned it a little bit, or sort of alluded to it, on our Facebook group, um, the ECY Garden. But um, I don't think we've probably mentioned it on social, like our general social media yet. Um, mostly just because we've had so much going on and um, the social media has fallen by the wayside a little bit just because of time. Anyway, um, so here it is, our brand new fluff. Hopefully you can see that okay. Um, I've had to kind of prop my phone up in a not really ideal position. Um, so I'll have to try and figure that out for next time I do a video. So this um, is Baby Alpaca and Silk. And it's really an alternative to our Eldwick Lace, which is uh, Kid Mohair and Silk. And like the Eldwick Lace, this is a two ply lace weight um, with, uh, let me just check, 300 meters per 50 gram skein. Now the Eldrick Lace is 400 meters, so just be aware of that if you're substituting. Um, it's a similar amount of silk in it to Eldrick Lace. Um, let me just check. The Lowther Lace has got 26% silk in, whereas Eldwick Lace is 30% silk. So in that respect, they're similar. Um, let's have another look. I'm just trying to show you different colours instead of the same one every time. If you can see that, it's really, really soft and fluffy. It's a different type of softness compared to the Eldwick Lace. Um, this is kind of, it's quite matte. Um, and it's very fuzzy, whereas with Eldwick Lace, which I've got for comparison, uh, Eldwick Lace um, is much more shiny um, because mohair is a luster fibre, which is the same as like Blueface Leicester and Wensleydale and things like that. They're, they're known as luster wools. Um, so that's why they're shiny and they're soft in a different way to other fibres. Um, Whereas obviously this is, is baby alpaca, so it's quite different, but it's so, so soft. It's like a velvety, fuzzy softness. It's just lovely. It's very cuddly. Um, and my hope is that, you know, if you like fluffy things, but you can't wear mohair, I'm hoping you'll be able to wear this um, and that it won't tickle or itch at all, hopefully. Um, so yeah it's listed weirdly enough it's listed on the suppliers website as um a singles yarn but i mean i don't know if you can how well you can see but i mean it's clearly not if you can see that i'll just see if i can get the camera to focus on that strand you can see from the texture of the strands that that that's more than one strand twisted together um i've tried to kind of like untwist it and inspect and I can definitely identify three core strands. Um, it's hard to tell because it's so fluffy, but there might actually be four. Um, anyway, it's kind of, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. It's just as a, as a matter of interest, really. Um, so, yeah. Oh, and there's some lovely orange. I did orange. I love orange. Orange doesn't sell all that well, but it's one of my favourite colours. I just love it. Um, so yeah uh 50 gram skeins so i suppose the next thing is to tell you about how it knits and crochets up um now normally i <laughs> i've had this for quite a while and normally i would have hoped to have completed at least one small project with it um before releasing it into the wild but to be honest with cat knits happening and and, and everything else i just haven't had time um but I have done lots of swatching. I did at least manage to get that done. So I shall show you these. So this first one is a two and a half millimeter needle. Needles. Um, I'll be honest, it was quite hard to use this yarn on two and a half millimeter needles. I don't really recommend it. I can't, I don't even know why you would do that. I just needed to try it. It's a very dense, 
a fuzzy fabric it almost looks felted you, you, you kind of can't really see the stitches very much um, and obviously up to the light there you can see so um, like I say I have no idea why you would use it on two and a half millimeter needles and I don't really recommend it but you know you don't know till you try these things do you so I'll just pop that over there so that's two and a half now I did three and a half three I think three and a half millimeter needles are probably my most used needle size you know I use three and a half for four ply and like fluffy lace automatically really for me for where my tensions are a four millimeter is just that bit too big a three millimeter is just that bit too small so that's a three and a half now i i would choose that fabric that's that's nice for me um it's just open and light enough um that it was easy enough to to do uh, but it's not so open that I'm going to get a draught because <laughs> I always feel the cold so and I just grabbed the um, tape measure I don't know if I can actually count these stitches very easily um, just try and give you an estimate of what the tension is One. about 19 maybe 20 stitches to four inches very unscientifically measured i'm afraid but it should give you a rough idea um so yeah three and a half millimeter needles for me and it, it's that's blocked out quite significantly by the way um so that would be my go-to um sort of tension that I would choose for this yarn on its own. I did also try four and a half millimeter needles and I'm sure a lot of people will really like this sort of fabric as well. It's much more open, very light and airy, but again, not so much that it kind of looks like a dish rag. <laughs> and just to compare it to the three and a half, can wrangle those uh, can you hopefully see that three and a half four and a half you can see the difference there okay so that's knitting I didn't um, I thought it was a bit kind of pointless to try in between sizes so they should hopefully give you a rough idea I did also crochet with it I did again I think this was a three and a half it was a few weeks ago and a lot's happened since then so I really should have labelled them and they're just forgotten. But I think that's a three and a half hook. Um, I I tried a few different types of stitches. So there's single crochet, double crochet and treble at the top. I think that's what it is. Um, I sort of know how to do them, but I forget the names. Uh, oh, there you go. You can see through the light there. I found this hard to crochet with because I couldn't see I couldn't see the stitches so you kind of just have to let your hook go where your hook wants to go if that makes sense and I know you do that anyway for crochet but with this yarn particularly you, you have to kind of be able to feel where the hook's going rather than relying on seeing um, and then I did a I think that was a five millimeter hook um, which was obviously much easier to see the stitches um, and if you like very lacy crochet that would totally work my, my crochet swatches just are not very neat I, can't, I think I struggled to get get them neat but I hope that's helpful to see anyway so that's those um, uh, so that's how they knit and crochet this yarn knits and crochets up on its own um, I had lots of questions in the garden about how it would work with other yarns because of course when you get a fluff what do we do with it we hold it double with other yarns well I do anyway um, 
I'm a bit obsessed with it really, but anyway. So the first one I've got is uh, Lowther Lace held double with Nate Before Ply. Now Nate Before Ply, I don't know if you can see how sparkly it is in this light actually. It's um, got silver sparkles to it. So that is uh, Nate being um, Briar Rose. So I held it double with um, the Lowther Lace that I, I've used for all this is Thunder. And so hopefully you can see this, how that's sparkling and how the fabric looks. I don't know whether the light's much good in here. I shall see when I watch this video back. Anyway, I really like this fabric. Um, oh, I used, what did I use? I think four and a half millimeter needles. I really wish I'd labeled these swatches. Label your swatches, people. <laughs> don't rely on your memory. I'm, I'm sure it's four and a half because I was um, testing it in relation to our um, <laughs> forgot the name. Hang on. Um, of course it is. I knew it began with an L. I'm losing the plot. Our Laverton shawl, my Laverton shawl, um, is four and a half millimeter needles, and I was testing to see whether you would be able to substitute this yarn for the Eldwick lace, i.e. how would it look held double with four ply? And the answer is, it's it's lovely. It's got a bit more of a tweedy effect, a mild effect compared to the mohair. I think the mohair diffuses itself more, more readily, whereas this being more of a close fuzz um, creates a more mild sort of tweedy effect. And I really like that. You've still got, can you see that fluffy halo? You've still got that but it doesn't sort of stick out maybe as much, I'm just plonk that there, as much as um, mohair. I'm wearing mohair actually. That sticks out a lot. Anyway, right. Next thing that I tried combining it with, I was like, oh, can you imagine fluff on fluff? And this is something I've been asked about, whether it would be too fluffy. So Coniston fingering, which is merino and mohair, and it has its own little fluffy halo. Oh, oh, the light there, that's horrible. Oh, that's better. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so, held double. So that's merino mohair for the fingering weight, held with the baby alpaca fluff. And yeah, I mean, they're the same color as well, by the way, they're both thunder. And actually you can see how much darker the Coniston Thunder is compared to the um, <clears throat> Lowther Lace Thunder. So the Lowther Lace, it like the uh, mohair as well, takes the colours quite differently for some of them. Um, so just be aware of that. Don't expect it to be an exact match. Not that it really would for hand dyed yarn anyway, but yeah, you can see those two, they're quite different. And then, so that's them blended together. Again, got a bit of a tweedy effect going on there because um, the Coniston's got that lustre to it, which the uh, Lowther doesn't. But I mean, I, you know, I love that. I love that. Again, four and a half millimetre needles. I I just love that. I just A jumper in that would be amazing. Uh, I'll just plunk that there. Okay, so... The answer is uh, four ply, held double with Lowther lace, uh, works beautifully. And I'm sure we all expected that, but you need to know, don't you? You need to check. And like I say, it depends on your tension, but for me, uh, I would go with four and a half millimeter needles for that. I did also try it held with Milburn double knit as well. So we were thinking about the damson um, because this colour's discontinued uh, for both Milburn four ply and double knit. And we were just kind of going, oh, I wonder what that's like with the Lowther lace, as we do, we mull these things over. So that's how it, how it looks. 
I think that's really nice. It's really pretty. Again, you've really got that sort of tweedy, mild effect. There's probably a better word for it. Um, because you've got the shine of the Milburn double note and then you've got that little bit of the contrast of the fuzz of the um, Lowther lace. But yeah, they, they, I think that, that looks really nice together. I'd wear a jumper in that. I'll just plug that there. Um, we, just while I'm here, we do also do Milburn four ply and damson as well. It's a really nice purple. Um, so that is it mixed with other yarns that I've tried so far. Um, obviously there are, there's so many com combinations that we could try. Um, oh, I didn't actually try it held double with itself. However, this, if you can see it, is my Cumulus blouse by, I think it's Petite Knit. It's on Ravelry anyway. And this is Eldwick Lace Held Double. And I've put this on because um, I just keep thinking, oh, you, you could totally, you know, if Eldwick Lace works Held Double for this, then Lowther Lace it, it's going to work as well. So, um, I recommend this pattern actually. It hardly uses any yarn and it's quick because the yarn is held double on, on and you use big needles. And um it's easy, oh it's just fantastic. And it's it's so lightweight, but it's so warm. I mean I'm like I'm quite hot <laughs> right now. And it's not that warm outside. But you know, if you're out walking with the dogs or whatever, you could wear this, take it off and stuff it in your bag when you get warm. Um which I always think is, is very practical. I like to be practical. So I'll just have a look at my other questions. Um, oh, colours, mixing colours. Yes, that's a really good one. So when it comes to mixing fluffy yarn with a non, well, any other yarn, actually, to be honest, I tend to go low contrast. Now I know that not everybody does, um, but hopefully you can see from my swatches why I uh, maybe maybe I'm just really boring I don't know but that, I mean you know who cares the point is I tend to go low contrast so the briar rose mixed with the thunder is probably about as high contrast as I would go when mixing a fluffy yarn with another one um and again I mean they're both purple and there's still a bit of contrast to that so because i think when you when you put a fluffy yarn in with your other yarn what you've got to think is that that fluff it's going to overlap the base yarn and it's going to it's going to diffuse the base color but it's also potentially going to really muddy it so if you use two i mean clashing colors what you're going to get is clown vomit is how I how I call it um which is just clashing you're just going to get clashing and it's going to be muddy and just horrible so there are some high higher contrast colors that you you know you could use to work together like you could use something like this like a pale this is pale yellow it's daffodil um you'd want to use it with I don't know like a dark green or something like that uh, I've not got any to hand actually but let's say it was blue so you used this and this together you could get away with that because they're not clashing they're contrasting but they're not clashing so what you're going to get is a sort of tweedy look between the yellow and blue I hope that makes sense. Um, I think this is something that I need to do more swatches in order to demonstrate, really. There's probably um, projects on Ravelry that might actually help demonstrate this. So just don't go for clashing co colours if you're going to go for contrast. Um, contrast can work, but yeah, just, just be careful with it, I think. Um, and if in doubt, don't go for contrast. Go for, go for more subtle colours. Okay, I hope that helps. I think it's something that maybe requires its own separate YouTube video, maybe. 
um you know in all this copious spare time that i've got <laughs> um but yeah actually it's a really good question um so next what have we got next color combinations for inspiration which follows on really from what i was saying um so i think for this what i will do is show you the colors of uh lowther that i actually did so we've got hydrangea which is my sort of pinky pink um cottage garden actually they're nice together aren't they because the cottage garden's got pink in it which which that sort of pulls out and then again daffodil um they work together i really hope you can see this okay in the light so they're actually they're really pretty together um and then i've got green tea again there's green in the cottage garden so that lot all work together it's very springy reminds me of like tulips and things like that spring bulbs um so that's that lot i've done other pinks as well i like to try and cover different types of pink so we've got like dianthus which is much more ready pink compared to hydrangea and um antique rose which is pale uh it's a cool pink it's sort of a, a not lilac but kind of in in that direction sort of pink um what else have we got orange yay love my orange um oh yes and granny's bonnet so granny's bonnet is a mix of sort of pinks orange purple um granny's bonnet is the name for aquilegia um so yeah that's that's why it's called that i love aquilegia so i've got those two um i did some blues oh 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 meadow rue oh, that's one of my favorites i love meadow rue because it's like a it's a dusky pink but it's a much more grayish than a lot of my other pinks so i hope you can see that those three are nice together actually aren't they that that works really nicely i don't know why i always put the colors together in threes but Anyway, I did some blues. So we've got tan, larkspur. I love larkspur. I think it might be my favourite blue because it kind of glows, but it's not in your face. Um, I also did riverside, which is a mix of like blue, grey and cream. Um, because of the fluff, what you tend to find with the variegated colours is that they diffuse um, the variegation in the colour and make it look a bit more like watercolours. That's how I see it anyway. So those are blues. Um, sorry, my hair's in my face. It's really itchy. Um, some neutrals. I always try to do neutrals. Um, I know they can look a bit boring when they're on their own, just in a basket, but I think neutrals are really valuable as part of the palette um because they make they make patterns stand out but they make other colors stand out as well so we've got driftwood oh, i mean that's just a classic isn't it an ecy classic driftwood bark now the bark has come out very weird on this yarn if i'm honest it's nice but it's odd it's kind of a bit pinky in places and um, a bit grey in places but anyway it is what it is that's that's what happens with hand dyed yarn you know it comes it comes out differently every time you do it and it is different on different yarns on different days you name it, it, it it's variable and I've done ash which um, I've talked about this before to me it's grey but I know that it can look a bit blue or a bit green in certain lights and to different people um so that's that like oh there's more actually green green t no i've done green haven't i Blech. losing the plot but it actually that goes nicely with this this is a cottage original cottage original colorways are they're generally experimental when i'm sort of trying to come up with a new recipe or something like that or try a new combination 
and I'm thinking, oh, I, th I think I'll probably keep this as a colourway, but I'll just need to try it. And it doesn't have a name yet. Um, so that's what Cottage Originals are. They're all one-offs. They may or may not be repeated. Um, you, I, I, I never know at that point. That's why they're a Cottage Original. Um, so that's what that is. I, I like these colours together. It's sort of peachy, pale green and grey, and then the cream, the natural cream. So I really like this together. Um, and if it sells okay, then I would, I think I would like to give it a name and um, bring it into regular production. And then the other cottage original that I did is this, and it's just a mix of sort of purples and pinks. I mean, oh, it's just so cuddly. I love it, I love it. Oh. It's just one of those yarns you want it, you just want it up here, you know? Um, so yeah, um, let me just check what the next question is. Could it work on its own? Okay, I think I've covered that hopefully um, with the swatches. The answer is yes, yes, definitely. Um, what's the gauge like mixed with other yarns? Again, covered that with the swatches, but um, there's your four and a half millimeter four ply fluff combo the gauge on that i'll just really quickly count it over four inches i can actually see the stitches on this as well so i can actually count them more easily one two three eight maybe 18 or 19 stitches for over four inches um after blocking okay uh does it shed yes yes it sheds <laughs> i'm afraid i think probably not as much as the mohair um to me anyway but yes it sheds it depends what you're wearing to be honest when you're using it if you're wearing something that's got a lot of uh, friction to it you're going to get more fluff on you but um yeah i'm afraid it does it, uh, so it, that's something that for me i've never found to be a problem other than when you're winding it, obviously, and it's whizzing around on your ball winder, you get fluff um, in the air and it, it, it's really itchy. <laughs> but that's something that I found with the mohair a lot more than um, the baby alpaca, the lather lace. Um, I haven't found this as bad for shedding, but yes, it does shed. Um, patterns, right, okay patterns so obviously because this is a brand new yarn we don't yet have any patterns out that call for this specific yarn um on Ravelry however because quite a lot of other indie dyers do this yarn what we've been able to do is have a look through Ravelry and find patterns that call for the same base yarn um now I don't think this is an ideal thing to be to do on video so um, we have put together a blog post of pattern inspiration um, for you to have a look at. It, you know, it's not all inclusive. It's just a selection to give us ideas. Oh, I'm really sorry. I need to twitch my nose. Um, oh, it's my, my hair is just driving me mad. Um, so blog post. Yeah, um, it's not published yet, but um, we'll try and get it published as soon as we can after this video goes live because um, I want to make sure that we've got written down everything that I've covered in this video, um, because obviously having it in text is much better for accessibility um, compared to video, especially if you're on rural broadband or anything like that. So um, for pattern inspiration, it's coming, um, and I will let you know, you know, on Facebook and everything, when the blog post is ready for you to have a look at, because yeah, you know you see this yarn and you want to buy it and you want to snuggle it and then you go but what would i make with it yeah absolutely that's a great question um and it so yeah we, we will do our best to answer that and give you lots of inspiration for it 
Um, I mean, I'm the kind of person who would just buy it anyway and be like, well, there's 300 metres, I'm sure I'll manage to find something to make with it. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so that's patterns. They will be covered, but not in this video. Um, hopefully in the future, I will be able to come back um, with a whole load of stuff that I've made in it and be able to revisit that aspect. Um, just in case you do want a bit more inspiration, this is my Laverton shawl, the one that I for weirdly forgot the name of earlier. So Laverton calls for one strand of four ply held together with one strand of Eldwick lace. But obviously, as soon as we got the Lowther lace, we were thinking, well, surely you could just use the Lowther lace instead. So. In terms of ECY patterns, my first one would be this. Um, and that's what I was referring to when I was doing the swatches. Because I was thinking, well, I need to do these swatches to make sure that I can recommend it for La uh, Laverton. There you go. It's so snuggly. I'm actually sweating now. I'm roasting in all this wool. <laughs> but yeah, I mean... Oh. So for this... Um, what you've got is you use a mini skein for the stripes you can just make them out and the pico edge it's again this was nate before ply it's slightly sparkly um so we've got nate minis in stock at the moment but we do also have um gold sparkly four ply on the way and that will be coming in mini skeins too um just fyi <laughs> And we have non-sparkly minis as well, if you want them. Anyway, everything's on the website. I don't, I don't need to go on and on about that. But yeah, so this is low contrast. You can just make the stripes out. And you can see that, again, it's Eldwick lace, but, you know, it's, the concept is still the same. You can just... Oh, I hope you can see that. You can just see, um, like, you've got the silver... In each stitch, you've got the silver of the Eldritch lace and then the sort of cream or brown of the main colour. Um, but then you don't get that on every stitch, so that's why it's sort of a bit tweedy and a bit mild. Oh, I just love it. So that's Laverton. The only other thing that I think I have to show you right now is I do, I mean, this is it being knitted up in progress, admittedly very 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 tiny um i'm sure you can guess what that, that's going to be <laughs> so this is the riverside colorway which i am knitting up into a design that i have in my head which i need to get out um if you never hear me talk about it again then you know it's gone horribly wrong and i have ripped it out and given up on it but hopefully that won't happen. <laughs> you just never know. So again, I'm using three and a half millimetre needles for this. Um, this is garter stitch, whereas the swatches were uh, stocking stitch. Just a point of note there. Don't know what's going on with that loop there. But yeah. So hopefully that will be a lovely thing that I'll be able to show you at some point. Um, I think think that might be everything i'm sure you'll be pleased to hear that um let me just check my list again yeah that, that's all the questions covered from the facebook group if you're not already in the facebook group please do come and join us it's the ecy garden there are three questions that you will need to answer in order to join because we're nosy and we like to know who you are <laughs> Um, and it's yes, a friendly little group and um, we share inspiration and things like that. It's very nice little community that we've got going on, um, which I have to say at the moment, if anyone watching in the far future, right now the UK is on lockdown because of coronavirus. And um, so things like Facebook groups and online Zoom meetings and all this kind of thing are really providing a lifeline for, for a lot of people at the moment. So um, I'm, f I'm just feeling really grateful right now that we've got this, it feels like a community, um, to be honest, that we've got going on and, you know, to be able to pop on there and kind of 
talk to people and get that interaction. It's really nice. So anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope it's been useful. I hope I haven't repeated myself too many times. I'm sure I probably have. I uh, hope I haven't missed any massive glaring obvious questions, but if I have, please feel free to ask us. I can always, you know, I can always do more videos. I can always reply on Facebook or by email or anything like that. Um, and yeah, enjoy this yarn. It, it goes live in a few days, but obviously if you're watching this video in the future, then hopefully it's already on the website. So um, enjoy the yarn. I will let you have it. Promise.